Today, the Living with Wildlife Illinois team is hosting a question and answer session about chronic wasting disease, also commonly known as CWD. I'm Laura Kamen. And I'm Kathy Andrews Wright. Today, we're joined by Dan Skinner with the Illinois Department of Natural Resources. Dan, could you please give us some background information about yourself and the role that you have within the agency? Sure, thanks for having me on. My name is Dan Skinner, and I'm originally from Chatham. I grew up on a farm growing corn and soybeans, and I went to the University of Illinois and got a degree in fish and wildlife conservation. I started my career with the Colorado Division of Wildlife, where I worked as a wildlife officer, and I spent about seven years out in Colorado before moving back to Illinois in 2014. And since January 2019, I've been employed with the Department of Natural Resources as the Forest Wildlife Program Manager. So our forest wildlife program is made up of our whitetail deer project, our urban deer project, our wild turkey project, and we have a forest wildlife biometrician. And so our program, our group of biologists, works to research and manage deer, turkeys, and squirrels in the state of Illinois. Thanks, Dan. So some of our viewers might not be familiar with what chronic wasting disease is or why it's problematic. Could you kind of give us a brief overview about the disease? Sure. Chronic wasting disease is a fatal, it's always fatal neurological disease that can affect animals in the deer family. So in Illinois, we have white-tailed deer. In other states, mule deer, moose, elk, anything in that deer family is susceptible to the disease. It is unlike many other wildlife diseases or, or diseases at all that people may be familiar with um, it, in that it's not caused by a bacteria. It's not caused by a virus. It is caused by a what's called a prion. It's a misshapen protein. So as mammals, we have proteins in our muscles and all over our body. These are misfolded or, or abnormal proteins known as prions. And when they come in contact with, with other proteins in the body, they, they replicate and create misfolded structures. Uh, chronic wasting disease is a transmissible spongiform encephalopathy or a TSE. So it's in the same family of diseases as scrapie, which affects sheep, as bovine spongiform encephalopathy, which some people may recall the mad cow disease scare. It's in that same family of diseases. All right, thank you, Dan, for that background on CWD. Now, let's go a little bit into the history of it. When was it first discovered in the United States? And then what's the history of it since it's arrived in Illinois? So CWD, chronic wasting disease, was first detected in the late 1960s. I believe it was 1967 in captive research deer out in Colorado. And so the first place we saw this disease spread to wild animals, wild deer, was also in Colorado. And, and, then, and then southern Wyoming. So by, by the early 1980s, it was found in wild populations out there. In the 1990s, we really saw nationwide you see deer, captive deer succumbing to chronic wasting disease. So, so the disease makes these big interstate or, or international, we saw it in a couple of Canadian provinces in the 1990s. We see this big spread of chronic wasting disease through the 90s. It's clearly it's being moved between captive cervids, captive, captive deer and captive elk. And, and you see these big jumps in the disease that, that couldn't otherwise be explained by any natural processes. You know, a, a deer is not walking hundreds of miles and, and spreading that disease. It's not spontaneously popping up. It hasn't always been there. So, so these are human caused big movements. And, and we see this throughout the 1990s. It, it crops up in, in some captive farms. And then after 2000, we really start to see the disease spread to wild populations of deer and elk in the United States. In early 2002, Wisconsin found their first positive in a wild white-tailed deer. They had another positive later in the year. 
November of that year, so November 2002, in northwestern Boone County, up, up near the Wisconsin-Illinois state line, we had our first white-tailed deer positive in Illinois. So that was 2002. So we're coming up on 18 years since our first initial detection of chronic wasting disease in Illinois. And in that time, we've seen the disease uh, spread out across the northern tier of Illinois, and, and the disease has also slowly progressed toward north central Illinois. As of, as of October 2020, we have 18 counties in the state of Illinois in which we've detected chronic wasting disease and wild white-tailed deer. Our farthest south detection is Livingston County. That's good information. So now that we know better what chronic wasting disease is and where it's located in Illinois, um, let's sort of switch gears a little bit and talk about how to minimize the spread of the disease. So can you kind of walk us through what the Illinois Department of Natural Resources is doing to minimize the spread of CWD in Illinois? So our chronic wasting disease management protocol in Illinois is, it's essentially a two-pronged approach. We are concerned about surveillance of the disease and we're also concerned about management of the disease. So to talk about surveillance first, we are testing deer for the presence of chronic wasting disease. Many of these deer are hunter harvested deer. Some may be suspect deer, some are, are roadkill in our surveillance area, and some are from sharpshooting. And we can get to that, we can get to those deer a little bit later, but, but we do a, a wide scale surveillance program. We will test for the presence of chronic wasting disease in thousands of deer every year. Our big push comes during the firearm season, the deer firearm seasons in late November and early December, that seven day season in Illinois. We, we run it as a three day weekend and a four day weekend. Hunters in areas where we have found chronic wasting disease in those counties that are chronic wasting disease positive who harvested deer during the firearm season, we, we require those hunters to stop by a check station and present their deer. At those check stations, trained DNR biologists will then ask to take a, a sample from the deer to test for the disease. And that's, that's a great way to conduct surveillance on a big scale because we've got thousands of hunters across the state who are out harvesting deer at the same time. And we can get a really good look at where the disease is at, at, any, at, at that point in time. So between that first firearm season and second firearm season, we run check stations in our chronic waste and disease counties. And we utilize that information to then direct our, our management. So after we pull these samples, we'll send them to the lab. They'll analyze the samples and come back and we can see where our positives are. And we know historically where our positives have been. We can see where the disease is on the landscape this year. And that will allow us to direct our management that occurs later in the year. So a bit, a bit more on that management, we utilize sharpshooting to target and remove deer in, in localized areas. So when the hunters in our check stations, or um, we may take samples from taxidermists, from meat lockers, from, from other sources, but when we pull a sample, we also associate that to a township range and section so we know the square mile of Illinois in which that sample was taken. So when we get positives, we can say, okay, this, this positive was from, was from this square mile of Illinois. So we know where the disease is. We use that information to go in after the hunting season's end. So from mid-January until the end of March, agency trained sharpshooters go into locations where we know we've had positive deer and conduct targeted removals. So what that looks like is going in with permission of a private landowner or on public land or, or on land that DNR owns or manages, putting out a bait station and utilizing sharpshooters to remove deer that come into that, to that bait. At the end of the year, the deer, uh, excuse me, the bait is cleaned up. The deer that come back and positive for chronic wasting disease, those deer are destroyed, that meat is destroyed. But 
the deer that we shoot and remove from the landscape that, that are not chronic wasting disease positive. So in other words, those deer where we did not detect chronic wasting disease, those are processed, frozen, and distributed to food pantries and food banks across Northern Illinois. So the idea with our management is that we're trying to disrupt the disease processes. The, the disease can spread, these prions can spread through direct deer-to-deer -deer contact. They can also um, spread through indirect contact, through a contaminated environment. So a deer can, can shed these prions in, in saliva, in feces, in urine, and those prions can hang out in the environment for a long time. No, nobody is quite sure, but, but we're talking years. Potentially, uh, the disease can remain infectious for years. And what we're trying to do is, is disrupt these disease processes by lowering deer densities in certain areas to make it harder for that disease to be spread from one year to the other. So at the end of each year, we utilize the data we received from the location data we received from our surveillance to gather management and the process repeats next year. Okay, that's great information. So you told us what the sportsmen, sportsmen and women are doing to help with the control of the disease and the, and the wildlife biologists. Is there anything that the general public can do to help stem the spread of chronic wasting disease? That's a good question. And there absolutely is. The, the first thing members of the public can do is participate in our in our hunting programs so we have a we have archery season that goes on in chronic waste and disease counties from the beginning of october until the middle of january this year i think it's it's 109 days of archery hunting opportunity additionally we have we have firearm seasons in those counties seven days of firearm hunting opportunity and in those cwd counties we've uh, we've expanded our our quotas. So there are plenty of permits available for people interested to hunt in those counties. Furthermore, we have a special chronic waste and disease season in which we're trying to encourage hunters to go out and reduce deer densities. To pick up an antlerless only permit for that, for that season, you can do it over the counter. It's only $5.50, but you also have the ability to roll over unused permits from earlier in the season. So if you have a firearm permit, if you have a muzzleloader permit from earlier in the season, you, you, you were unsuccessful, you didn't, make, you didn't have time to go out, your permit is unfilled, you can use that permit in that, in that chronic waste and disease special season. We're trying to encourage hunters to get out there, liber, liberalize the regulations and, and um, help us reduce these deer densities some more because we can't, we can't do it all on our own. In addition to participating in the hunting seasons, we really encourage people to work with our district wildlife biologists in our, in our CWD management operations. So the success of this program depends on us as the Department of Natural Resources having private properties in which we can go in and work with landowners to remove deer as part of our CWD management. So, you know, we have public lands across Northern Illinois where we do CWD sharpshooting operations, but Illinois is a state that's, it's majority private property. It's 97% of Illinois is privately owned. And so the success of our CWD management program really depends on those conservation minded landowners that work with us, that allow our sharpshooters onto their property and allow us to, to test deer from their place. And, and were it not for, those landowners across Northern Illinois, our, our sharpshooting program would look much differently. And so it's very important to, to recognize the contributions those people have historically put into the program and continue to put into the program. Finally, we encourage people to report sick or suspicious deer. You can do that through your local conservation police officer. You can do that on the Whitetail Deer Illinois website or you can do it by contacting your local DNR office or your local DNR wildlife biologist. There are, there are any number of things that could happen to a deer that make them look sick. Some of, some of them could be explained by injuries or other illnesses, but there are also some things to look out for, for a deer that's in the, it's in the later stages of chronic wasting disease. 
like I said earlier, chronic wasting disease, it's always fatal. If a deer contracts the disease, it is going to die from it. During the early stages, and this is part of what makes the disease so hard to fight, because during the early stages of the disease, there are no outward signs, there are no clinical signs that this deer is ill. You could have two deer next to each other. One could be chronic wasting disease positive and one not, and you may never know the difference. They look the same, they act the same, they're in the same body condition. But in the later stages, as that disease progresses, you start to see some things. Uh, emaciation, the, the body condition of the deer starts to go down. You may see excessive salivation, drooping ears, loss of fear of people, excessive urination. So these deer really start to go downhill. Loss of coordination, trembling, but by the very late stages of the disease, the deer, it's, it's obvious that something is wrong. So anytime you see a deer like that, we would encourage you to, to contact the DNR and let us know. We can see if we can get somebody out there, potentially take a look at it and, and maybe test that disease, that deer for chronic wasting disease. So I also understand that you, the Department of Natural Resources encourages people to not um, have bird feeders out, not to have salt blocks out, some things that tend to concentrate deer, which could spread the disease. Is that true? Can you speak to that? So anything that is going to unnaturally concentrate deer in an area is something we try to avoid when we're looking at it through the lens of chronic waste and disease management. And so things like providing food for deer and intentionally feeding deer, putting out bait for deer during the hunting seasons, those, those are all things that are, those are a violation of our administrative rule to begin with. Those, those are illegal activities. You cannot knowingly provide food for deer. There are any number of reasons why that's, why that's a bad idea. I can, I can speak to a couple of them. In addition to the CWD aspect of it, you know, we just don't want deer piling up on the same on the same very small piece of property, the chance of direct disease transmission at that point really goes up, and the chance of this in environmental contamination from the prions and, and a potential for indirect transmission of that disease down the road really picks up. There are other density-dependent diseases, though, that we can see go back and forth between deer when we have unnatural concentrations. The other thing that we see when, when people feed deer is really a, a potential for an increase in, in predators. So you could have animals that are, that are preying on deer. In Illinois, with the loss of our large predators, you know, really what this could mean is, is coyotes coming around. But you could also attract rodents and other, and other secondary animals just from putting all that food out there on the ground. We also see the potential for an increase in car accidents where in areas where we've unnaturally concentrated deer. And then just you know property damage because there are deer everywhere. Damage to, to turf grass, to the yards, to ornamental plantings, to fruit trees. So, so deer in Illinois, they have plenty of food. Our winters can be cold, but they're not that severe. There's plenty of resources out there in the landscape as it is for white-tailed deer. We don't need to provide more by, by giving them food. Thanks, Dan. You've provided a lot of good information. Um, are there other resources if people wanted to know more about chronic wasting disease? Are there other resources that you would point them to? The chronic wasting disease page on the Illinois Department of Natural Resources website is a great resource for information on chronic wasting disease. You can go there and you can find all of our previous annual reports, our annual chronic waste and disease reports, in which we, we um, document how many deer were removed from sharpshooting activities, how many positive deer were found, the location of those positive deer, maps of positive sections. That's a great resource. It's our CWD page on our DNR website. The Whitetailed Deer Illinois website is another good, good resource where we have information on not only some disease management and some ecology things, but anything and everything white-tailed deer, you can, you can find there. Additionally, the USGS, the United States Geological Survey, has a really good chronic waste and disease website that has, it, it takes a bigger picture view of chronic waste and disease. So some more background on the disease itself and, and where this disease can be found. Because it's, this is not just an Illinois issue, it's, 
it's not just a Midwest issue. Chronic wasting disease is now found in, in multiple countries and it's, as of this year, I believe it's found in 24 states. So almost half of our states have a known chronic wasting disease infection somewhere in the state in, in a deer or an elk population. So those are all great resources people can go to to check out. All right, thank you, Dan. Uh, you've addressed all the questions that Laura and I had for you for today. Is there anything else that you would like to share with our listeners about chronic wasting disease? Well, again, I appreciate the opportunity to come, to come on here and talk. There is one more thing. It seems that there is a, there are a bunch of myths out there surrounding chronic wasting disease. Things that you read on the internet, things that you heard down at the coffee shop, many of those just aren't true. So on that chronic wasting disease page on our DNR website, we have a, we have a brochure of, of common myths about chronic wasting disease. And that's a good resource for people to check out. It tells some of the common misconceptions and, and, then, it, and then right after that, we'll tell you what, what the department really is doing to manage for the disease. And I think it's important for everybody to keep in mind that we as a department are able to do what we do because of the men and women out there in Illinois that buy hunting licenses, that buy uh, hunting permits. So much of what we do is funded by license and permit dollars. And again, we there's only a few of us as the Department of Natural Resources in our division, there's only a few of us, but we have tens of thousands of hunters across the state. So they help us by, by hunting deer, they, they're our main management tool and, and there's no way we could ever replace them. And by following the rules, by buying the permits, by buying the hunting licenses, they allow for us to do the wildlife conservation and the wildlife management that benefits everybody in the state of Illinois, not just hunters. And I think it's very important to recognize and, and appreciate those people for what they do. I heartily agree with that. So that wraps it up for today's question and answer session on chronic wasting disease. Thanks, Dan, for joining us today and answering the questions that have come in. For those of you watching, if you have other questions about wildlife in Illinois, you can send those in to the Wildlife Illinois website, and we will cover those next time. Until then, we'll be seeing you.